Hi guys, Alec Pierce Scuba, back with another tech tip. I hope that you guys are uh, having some fun with these. Kevin and I do a lot of work. I, mean, I do all the work, really. I'm the talent. I, <laughs> I have to look good. I have to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Kevin, all he does is the lights and the camera work and the editing and the posting and all. <laughs> anyway, but we do put a lot of work into this and we don't get paid a penny for this, none of this. We don't take any money from any manufacturers or from uh, YouTube. So make you laugh and you learn something, I'm happy. That's all I ask for. Anyway, let's get going here. So uh, first of all, I should mention we're at a new uh, facility. Yeah, this is a whole new set. <laughs> we're at the um, scuba shack the scuba shack has been here for a long long time I don't know exactly how long but I'll, I'll bet you it's been better part of 40 years and uh, scuba shack has been owned by a couple different owners uh, all friends of mine and the current owner is is a wonderful lady and uh, it, it's a, just a great facility in, in some respects it's a great facility because it's the only facility up in this area if you're going to be diving anywhere in the Muskoka Lakes it's a big region then you're going to know the scuba shack is this place to go but it's a great facility anyway they're unique in several ways first of all they're unique because they're in the Muskoka Lakes they're unique because they almost exclusively not exclusively but they almost in fact they built a reputation on running uh, uh, dives out to a famous shipwreck called the Waomi W-A-O-M-E Wayomi. So look that up. Wayomi Shipwreck in Muskoka Lakes. Read about that. Fantastic. Great shipwreck to dive on. All kinds of dive. They train, they service, everything else. They are unique as well in that they have a hydro testing station. We're going to see that. Very few dive stores do their own hydros anymore. It just doesn't worth it, quite frankly. But they do, and we're going to see their hydro testing station, and that'll also allow me then to show you guys who've asked about hydros, what hydro testing is like. And they do lots of stuff too. In fact, it's the only region. Take a look. It's the only dive store in this region that uh, has a, a, a big source of uh, pure air and uh, they do nitrox fills all levels. They cater a little bit to, uh, to tech divers. If you're a techie diver, they can help you there as well. Great little dive store, so don't forget about it, Scuba Shack. So anyway, today I want to share a, a, a quick tech tip, a very quick tech tip. Because some of you have asked, how do you adjust the breathing of your regulator? How do you adjust the breathing effort? Well, it's very difficult for a diver to really adjust his breathing effort. There are ways to do it, but it's very difficult for him to adjust it accurately. Uh, in, in, in dive stores and service centers, we adjust it very accurately according to what we call factory specifications. We can actually, uh, you can actually adjust a regular so it breathes better, shall we say, easier than is specified in factory specifications. But how do we do that? We use the same tools, but the difference is that we have instruments that allow us to measure very, very accurately, yeah, which the typical diver does not have. They're available. You can get them. They're not inexpensive. But let me just quickly show you what we do in a dive store. <clears throat> when, we, when we finish servicing, we're going to assume we finish servicing a regulator. Now we want to adjust it so it breathes beautifully. So I've mounted this regulator on here. It's a pretty typical regulator, first stage. Uh, second stage, it has a safe second on it, has a low pressure BC inflator hole, even has an SPG. All we're concerned about right at the moment is the first and second stage. So the first thing you need to do if you're going to um, adjust uh, the breathing effort is uh, make sure that the intermediate pressure is correct. And we've talked about this before. If you check back in my tech tips, you'll see that there are several ways of checking the intermediate pressure. Uh, um, I showed you, I think, excuse me, I think I showed you how to make a very cheap, very inexpensive, I mean, these are 150 bucks, but you can buy these gauges at Home Depot or other places for less than 10 bucks. You have to get the proper scuba fitting and, 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 and a little uh, adapter in here, but then there, there is an intermediate pressure checker. And if you have the regulator <coughs> on air, and the air turned on. Now, this special fitting just fits into your uh, BC inflator hose. Watch. Turn the air on. 150. Very simple way to check your intermediate pressure. The larger the gauge, the more accurate the gauge. So if you have a little typical two inch gauge like this, you can adjust the pressure to 150, 155, 160, and so on. But if you want to adjust it more accurately than that, which really isn't necessary. But if you do, 
And then you get a bigger gauge. So you see, you have a gauge like this, for instance, and you can set this gauge. You can you can adjust the intermediate pressure to 151, 152, 153, 147, whatever you want to. It's just a bigger gauge. Bigger gauge. Then the individual markings on the gauge are more separated. Watch, Kevin. You see the gauge? To the BC inflator hose on this fitting on the side, and there you go. There's your intermediate pressure. In this case, it's 151 or thereabouts, and that's just fine. Once the intermediate pressure is set to within, within specified limits, and intermediate pressure is seldom a fixed number. When you look in the service manuals, they don't say 137. They don't say that. They don't say 143. What they indicate generally is that the intermediate pressure should be 140 plus or minus 15 psi. Well, realize that that means anywhere from 125 to 155. Sometimes it will specify the range. It will say that the intermediate pressure should be between 135 and 155. And anywhere in there is acceptable, so this is certainly acceptable. That's pretty typical for most regulators. Some regulators, a few, not too many, but a few of them are higher, maybe as high as 160, and some are a little lower, perhaps as low as 120. But generally speaking, most regulators are in that 135 to 155 intermediate pressure range. So we're good. That has nothing to do with breathing effort, nothing at all. We're going to assume that the first stage delivers air to the second stage. And it does. Now you might notice something else. Can you see that? The minute the second stage starts to flow, intermediate pressure drops. I'm going to do that again. The instant you breathe, it drops. Okay, that's important to remember. And the reason for that is very simple. If you've been following my tech tips at all, you know that the intermediate pressure is the pressure coming from the first stage. So this entire hose and the valve mechanism in the second stage is full of air at intermediate pressure, in this case 150. If you press on the second stage purge, then that air and all that system drops very slightly until the first stage opens and delivers new air to bring the pressure back up. Well, that very slight drop for just a split second shows on that gauge. That's all that is. All right? That's important, though. Now, we want to adjust <coughs> the intermediate pressure. Now, you know when I spoke earlier about that special tool that you can purchase. You can do this with a screwdriver. Go back over my uh, tech tips, and you'll find the, the, the episode that shows you how to adjust second stage breathing. You know I have that special tool in here, so I can actually adjust the intermediate pressure. Listen. Oh, a little too, too easy, huh? <laughs> it's free-flowing. So, I would adjust it as carefully as possible right to that edge, you see? It's not free-flowing, but it's very, very close to free-flowing. So now when you breathe on it, oh yeah, Ooh, nice air. That's some Muskoka air is good, huh? <laughs> However, how do you measure that? And if you wanted to measure it, how do you do it? And if you wanted to adjust it very, very specifically, how do you do that? Well, the only way other than this, and this is the most common way, by the way, the only way other than that is by, with the use of the magnahalic gauge, a magnahalic gauge, magnahalic. Say that, everybody, three times. Magnahalic. Here it is right here, Kev. You take a look over here, if you would, nice and close. This is a very, very special gauge, magnahalic. It measures <clears throat> reduced pressure. And you have a hose connected to that magnahalic gauge like this. Pressure goes down, let's say, for instance, if you inhaled on this hose. Are you watching, Kevin? Yeah. See that? That goes up. I'm just drawing in very, very, very lightly. And that gauge goes up. But anyway, so we want to measure this. So what do you do? Well, it's very simple. Now what you do is you install this magnahalic gauge. It can go in a variety of ways. We're going to do it this way this time. You install it over the mouthpiece so it's sealed on the mouthpiece. Now when I draw in on this tube now, I'm drawing air from the second stage, just as if I was taking a breath. And when I draw air from the second stage, it draws the diaphragm in and opens the valve and I get air. At the same time, this magnahalic gauge through the adapter here is going to measure how much effort it took for me to draw in. Let's do it once first. You saw the gauge move. All right. So now, what do we do with all that neat information? Well, first of all, we have to determine exactly what effort is required. There are two ways to determine, and the difficulty here is determining exactly the moment that that valve opens and air starts to flow. When is that moment? And there are two ways to do that. If your ears are very, very good, you will hear. 
you will hear the initial tiny escaping air coming out of this valve. It's close to your head and you'll hear it. My ears don't work very well anymore. <laughs> variety of reasons for that, not just that. So I sometimes depend on Intermediate pressure. Did you notice that? When I drew in on this and you heard that slight hiss indicating that second stage valve had just opened and the magna halide gauge was up in this area here. If you didn't notice, take a look this time. You'll notice that at the same time, the intermediate pressure gauge dropped. Watch. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? So me, in my case, I don't listen for the sound of escaping air. I watch this gauge. The second that this gauge starts to drop, I quickly register on the first gauge, and I can see that it's measuring one, one and a half or two. Just that easy. If I want to adjust it, I can screw the seat in. This is from my previous tech tip. Make it a bit harder. If I want to make it easier, I can back it out a little bit and make it a bit easier, up to the point of free flow. There you go. That's how it's done. Now, what is this gauge measuring? This gauge is measuring pressure. PSI. What is this gauge measuring over here? Uh, interesting enough, it's measuring inches of water. <laughs> inches of water. Yeah, exactly. If you had a glass tube, a glass tube, like a, a drinking straw would work. Get a long one if you can. Uh, and you put it in some water, and you mark that glass tube every inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten. Every inch. And you put your mouth over the end, and you started the draw. When the water comes up to the one inch mark, you now have reduced the pressure inside that glass tube equal to one inch of water. Okay, one inch of water. The pressure on the water surface outside is greater than the pressure in the tube because you've been drawing on it. And that pressure difference is equal to one inch. It's really simple. It's a simple concept. Draw a little harder, and you draw the water up to two inches. Now you have a breathing effort, if you like, of two inches. Just that easy. So typically, regulators, battery specs on regulators are somewhere in the inch and a half to two inch mark. Let's take a quick look here. Can I have the suit we got here? Oh, wow. That's less than an inch. You see that? That's now, you can't stop that needle. You can't lock it. It's a variable needle. You draw harder, like that. But if you take a look at it, when that air started to flow, it was only about three quarters of an inch. Very easy breathing. Boy, I adjusted that well, didn't I? <laughs> so the old tried and true method seems to work pretty well. Simple. I hope that's clear. There's the instrumentation. There's the method. And again, whoever it was, a couple of people actually that sent in the comment asking me how we measure accurately breathing effort. I hope that's answered your questions. Maybe there'll be more questions now. <laughs> anyway, there you go, Alec Pierce. Tech tips coming all the way from Gravenhurst, the scuba shack up on the Muskoka Lakes. Talk to you again real soon.